I'm local editor Rick Green, and with me today is University of Central Oklahoma President Don Betts and Silas Allen, our higher education re reporter. Don, thank you for joining us today. Great to join you both. Uh, Silas has been writing articles about enrollment growth at UCO. Isn't that right, Silas? I have. And uh, we were hoping to find out what you expect to see as far as enrollment is concerned for the upcoming academic year. Well, that's a good question. We would like to know that as, as well. Uh, because many of our students from the metro area will actually enroll quite late. But last year, uh, over the successive semesters, we've had a steady increase in, in enrollment, which is a little bit of a different pattern than some of the other institutions in the state. And over the last five years, we've grown by FT of 1,500 students, so that's a fairly large number. Um, we've had um, en record enrollment growth last spring, last fall, but only by a little bit each time. So I would think we will come in 17,000, three, four, 500 students, which uh, is a record for us again. Uh, we were at 17,211 when we took the census last August. When you do see continuous growth year over year like that, how do you prepare to continue that growth? Well, it's a, it's a challenge because the resource issue is there, the personnel issue, uh, the number of faculty, both full-time and adjunct that we have access to, creates a, a real opportunity and a real challenge. So what we try to do, and we anticipate based on past patterns, what we've needed, and then we monitor very closely on a daily basis where the demand is, and then we stand by to augment those particular areas if we need it. For example, an introductory English course, which might have 30 sections, suddenly we need two or three more. We have to go back into our uh, reservoir of individuals that can help us out, make sure that they, the quality we need, obviously, and also the time frames work. So it's, it's a challenge, but we've done it well enough that I feel we can continue to grow in a responsible manner and meet the needs of the Metro. In the past, you've discussed uh, UCO's role as a metro university and not just a typical regional university. How is that role different? Well, it's different, I can tell you, because I spent 26 years at another one of the regional institutions, Northeastern State University, and now about 10 years here at UCO. The difference is that all of the regional universities were set up in small communities, every one of them, uh, Edmond and Tahlequah and Weatherford, et cetera. It's just that the metro, including Edmond, grew to be 1.3 million people. So we found ourselves as a regional university, but the region we were serving is a metropolitan region. So we had to actually reinvent what it is we would do and how we would do it, different what we would do at Tahlequah or, or at Weatherford. For example, our peer group of institutions, which have been accepted both by our Russo board as well as by the governing regions, both of those uh, boards have accepted in 2008 and 2009 that our peer group is not in Oklahoma. Our peers are 10 institutions from around the country, all of whom have strong metropolitan identities, and you would recognize them, uh, Wichita State, Boise State, um, Youngstown State, uh, Kennesaw State in Atlanta, all of them about our size or larger, and all of them that have a very focused mission because they serve a very large population. We are a, a bachelor's and master's degree public university, and there's nothing else like us around this region. And so that gives us unique opportunities and responsibilities that we have to, have to assume. So for the last several years, we've been contouring what did we do and how we do it to meet this what I think is a burgeoning, exciting metropolitan area. And we want to be the kind of institution that's a natural collaborative partner with all the players in the region so that we can help accomplish the metro goals. President Betts, there's been a proposal on the books for some time now to locate the state medical examiner's office at your university. Where does that proposal stand now and why is that important? Actually, there has been an, a legislation passed a couple of years ago which said that there should be a medical examiner's office and it should be, in fact, uh, in, uh, in Edmond at the University of Central Oklahoma. Right now, of course, um, it has not been built yet. The funding is not, is not there. Um, one of the pathways to that funding is through the master lease agreement, which at this point has, is being reviewed in terms of its constitutionality, uh, and we will see the results uh, of that. But the original legislation designates our institution as the host. Uh, for the university, it makes a lot of sense, and I also think for the city of Edmond, um, we have the Forensic Science Institute, which is, 
well known not only here, but also nationally, and I have to tell you even internationally, across the street, a very large complex of OSBI. And the medical examiner himself uh, has told me repeatedly, Dr. Pfeiffer, that he sees it as a real win for him to have that kind of expertise located in, in such close proximity, I think, for our students in forensic science and in our other um, criminal justice programs and a variety of programs that we have, there's a natural symmetry here in internships and other opportunities. So we still look forward uh, to the opportunity of being a host for, for the medical examiner's office, and the medical examiner seems equally well disposed in that direction. So there's some other hoops that have to be jumped through. Um, we hopefully, hopefully those will, will pass in the next several months and we can get on with the business of having a medical examiner's office that can be accredited by the national organization that accredits them. Very good. President Betts, thank you for joining us today. Silas, thank you as well. For more information, go to the Oklahoman or newsok.com. Okay